Hello, everyone. It's uh, amazing to be all with you today. Um, and so, yeah, today we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome. Uh, so I've seen that most of you have your cameras off. Just really feel free and use this as you want to use it. If you want to engage, have your camera on, or if you prefer to just uh, have your cameras off. Um, we're going to have a Q&A. Um, uh, opening session after the presentation. Um, if you want to also like, sort of write your messages or your questions in the chat as we go along, we can uh, also answer them at, uh, at the end. So imposter syndrome. So like Eva was saying, it's really something that touches uh, all of us uh, in one way or another at different periods of our lives and potentially as well a little bit like sort of um, in our everyday lives. And uh, I wanted to start by uh, addressing this question. So what is it? What is it that we're referring to when we're talking about imposter syndrome? Um, we see quite a lot of it on, um, all over the place on social media. So is it like a little bit of a trend or is there really something true to about it? You know, like is, is it a real thing? Um, and my experience is that the reason why we're hearing so much about it is that because there is a lot, um, you know, that goes with that. And maybe when we talk about imposter syndrome, it might be just the tip of the iceberg. Um, we look When we look at the uh, definition of a syndrome, actually, it's a combination of behaviors, of emotions, of thoughts, uh, of potentially of symptoms, if we're talking about a condition. And the reason why I'm talking about the tip of the iceberg there, because I think it refers to a lot more of the doubts and the fears that we can be having. So uh, the bigger picture, I think, is the self-doubt and the self and the fear that we have, particularly around what, uh, what concerns us, what touches us uh, personally. And these are very intrusive and negative thoughts. And um, a lot of the time they control us because they are in our blind spot so that's why i as well i quite like the analogy of the iceberg uh we see maybe some of it on the tip but there's actually a lot more going on uh inside of us at the at a deeper level is it normal is it common is it natural my answer to that would be yes uh, a lot of people experience it, um, no matter what experience, what age, what gender, what level of education. Um, it's it's really something that is one of the most universal experienced um, symptom, if we want to call it a symptom. And um, and just to reassure you, I wanted to mention here some of like very very famous and successful people that experience uh, imposter syndrome. So, um, so former and uh, uh, we're not here anymore. We've got Albert Einstein. Can you can you realize, can we just like take a moment to take that in? Like, Albert Einstein um, doubted us himself and had moments where he was like, mm, really, were they that great of discoveries? Do they really deserve, you know, like that people have really talked so much about them and yeah, mm, so he, doubt, he, he has doubted his, uh, himself and his work. Uh, Maya Angelou, that I really like, who's a, an American poet uh, that you might know, also had imposter syndrome. And uh, someone that's more recent and who's still alive, uh, Michelle Obama, talks about her own experience of, uh, of imposter syndrome. So I feel that, ah, maybe we can just like, take a breath there and just go, all right, okay. Uh, so it's about, you know, about pretty much everybody could be experiencing uh, imposter syndrome, no matter what level of success, level of um, celebrity, et cetera, et cetera. And IQ, uh, all of these aspects have little to do actually with imposter syndrome. So what is the problem then? We could also go like, with like, all right, so is there a problem that like everyone experiences that and well, it's common and uh, and yeah, let's just live with it and, and so on. So the problem is what imposter syndrome can be cost, costing us. Uh, it can be costing the fact that we're not trying. In my experience, it's a lot the case that like a lot of people wanting to go create their own business or start as a freelance and they never do. They never do this, they uh, paralyzed by, uh, by that fear and by those doubts. 
There can be a lot of emotional pain, of stress, of anxiety. There can be a lot of missing out of opportunities. Um, it can influence our behaviors, our body language, and have an influence on the way we deliver our work um, and the way, you know, all sorts of, uh, of, of influence in our professional and personal lives. Um, even our voice, even the words that we use can be really influenced. And if we leave it there, if we don't do anything about it, then the threat is also that it can control us. It can control us. And uh, psychology has really done um, a lot of a lot of research around around that. That if something stays in our heads, and it's fascinating, and um, there's there's loads of work uh, around that. I can I can point you towards more if you're if you're interested. Um, that if it stays in our heads, if it stays like a thought in my head, it 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 still is controlling me. It still feels like a mountain. It still still feels like something that I can never get rid of. The moment I acknowledge it, the moment I share about it, it can be journaling. It can be speaking to someone. It can be recording your voice on your own phone. Um, I can take some distance with it, and I can start. Um, enabling uh, a different shift a different way of functioning so that you are not controlled anymore so basically imposter syndrome can prevent you from from thriving and uh, and it might be that we always will experience some thoughts of self-doubt and some level of imposter syndrome the faults might still be there and that's what michelle mevan was sharing in her own experience, she would still have probably daily some thoughts, some doubts, uh, but they have lost the power over her. Uh, so I hope that that does sound good and we'll explore the different ways and I uh, will invite you maybe to have a piece of paper with you because I'm going to ask you some uh, some questions, suggest some questions that you can be exploring. And of course, during that presentation, it's not enough time. So I would recommend that you uh, maybe take some notes or take some uh, little screenshots or uh, write down those questions so that you can reflect on them. Uh, and so we've dived in straight away and I want to maybe just take, take a little step back and just introduce myself. Who is there? talking to me about imposter syndrome. Um, <laughs> we could have an imposter in the syndrome about talking about imposter syndrome. Uh, so I am Clem Harding and uh, my business name is Coach Clem. I'm a certified entrepreneur and mindset coach. I have had a, a diverse career. You've probably seen that in the bio in the description. I was initially a language teacher and I traveled the world. Then I created my first business who was a bilingual nursery. And now I'm a full-time mindset coach. Loved working with um, uh, freelancers, with entrepreneurs, uh, and and you know, like really working on all those different levels. So yes, it's important to look at the strategy. It's important to have a solid plan, and that's what coaching is about. Uh, but without that solid inner foundation and that resilient mindset, you could be building things on sand. So you want to really think. Um, feel that you're solid and strong inside of you so you can reach your your full potential um do i experience imposter syndrome i think that is cool the question as well i i thought that maybe you would be wondering um and yes definitely and one of the areas that for me is a big one and it's very often the case when whenever you have uh, something new in your life or a new a sort of a, a learning curve um, it, this is this is very often where you can expect in, imposter syndrome to to be, and for me it's uh, um, parenting. So I'm a new mum, uh, Isla. My daughter will be one on New Year's Eve, um, and uh, parenting. Wow, I've discovered parenting. It is this is such a challenge. I don't know if we've got any parents in uh, in the in the room today or any parents listening to that to that recording. It's the best game in the world. Of absolutely loved all of it but wow it is intense and yes i can experience uh doubts and fears uh it's a challenging period also with the uh with being sleep deprived like last night i was woken up every two hours and just the well full of emotions and and this new learning so in a nutshell how do i deal with it 
um, I keep on reminding myself that I am doing the best that I can. I am doing the best that I can. And I know that, I know that this uh, cannot be touched, this cannot be taken away from me. And that is enough because I believe in myself enough. Uh, and if I struggle to remember that, then I ask for help. <laughs> I ask around me, I ask for my, my friends, my family, uh, the coach that I also work with. So we're in this together, guys, right? We are all walking the path. We are all working at uh, getting better at all these mindset aspects. Um, I, I don't believe that it's ever over, uh, but I do believe that we, uh, we get better and we get a lot from it. All right, let's move on. So we're going to be talking now about the awareness. Awareness is um, for a lot of things that, uh, th that my work is about, is, is a starting point. Uh, and I want to focus on uh, what is specific, what is the, the awareness that we have to um, have, particularly when we're talking about uh, freelancing and entrepreneurs, um, because we have chosen, and my, I include myself there, being uh, myself, my, myself having my own business, we have chosen a different way. It's not the common, the normal. We have uh, come out of employment and we've chosen to stand out. And that is the first thing that has made us step out of our comfort zone into our adventure zone. I love the concept of adventure zone. Um, it's more original. A lot of people fear that because it's a lot more of the unknown than what uh, is common sort of around society. And uh, in my experience, it's holding probably alongside with imposter, syndrome, the imposter syndrome around probably 90% of people who want to be self-employed and create their own business. Um, they're hold back just there, just at this very step of doing it. So first of all, I want to acknowledge you and, uh, and congratulate you if you have uh, started and if you have stepped into that zone that you want to live in. But it can be any other adventure zone in our lives. So anything new for us. Um, and uh, what's interesting is that uh, for, for, for freelancers, for entrepreneurs, that of course, there is the fear of failure um, and the, the fact of like, uh, a lot of people telling me, oh, is that going to work? And all these doubts that also are coming from the outside are not always easy to uh, to manage. And also the fear of success. Um, and what is that? So just in a nutshell, again, um, is the fear of success is something that is a little bit more subtle to grasp, is the idea of uh, if things go right, if I do really, really well on this and that and the other, then I am afraid I will not be able to live up to those expectations that I imagine uh, will be. So this like sort of pressure that I put on myself of becoming perfect as my business grow, as uh, I get more work as a freelance, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, um, it's, really, it's really interesting that uh, managing the negativity, the risk, the uh, an instability that, that goes with the, um, with the fact of being a freelancer and an entrepreneur. It's, um, for me, it's really like there is no better or worse employment and freelancing or self-employed or having your own business um, is just very, very different. And there are pros and cons on both ways. And we just need to really sort of change our approach. Uh, it's a learning, isn't it? And we man and we learn to manage that more and more and more. Uh, and again, our adventure zone eventually becomes our comfort zone. So uh, we feel like we know we know more the ins and outs. And uh, uh, the most important bit being choosing the things that is right for you. Um, so uh, we look at uh, these different things. Uh, and we start to build sort of a picture. Yeah, the awareness is like, oh, oh, I'm understanding more and more about what's going on internally. And the in invitation here, my proposition here with this presentation is to um, listen to everything that is being shared and feel what resonates with you particularly. There might be some things that you go, mm, yeah, not so much this. Actually, that's quite good. Oh, yeah, yeah, this, this is really something that I experienced. Um, because we want to be as closely aware as possible as um, um, as we can, um, aware of those tr triggers and those limiting beliefs. 
and they're always unique, always unique to you. Um, and they can be, for example, also like we said about things that are negative, but also potentially about things that are positive. Oh, I received a positive feedback. Uh, my client's super happy about that work. Yeah, but yeah, but do they really mean it? Are they really being truthful with me? Um, I, I see that times and times again. I oh, I got an award. Uh, yeah, but you know, I don't, I don't really deserve it. It should have gone to X, X, Y, Z. Um, and in the research on psychology, it's so interesting to see that it also happens at the highest level. So world record champions go, yeah, <laughs> it should have been even better. So it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy how the mind uh, works and we need to be aware of, uh, of what happens in us. We might be triggered by some things. Uh, but maybe not others, yeah. A very typical one can be the also like others can do it, uh, but I can't. Who do I think I am? Uh, I don't have what it takes. There's obviously this missing, X, Y, Z missing in me. So first start by observing the thoughts. Um, what do you hear in your head? What is it exactly telling you? What are the words that you hear? And how does it show up to you? So becoming really, really aware of um, this internal process. Um, and that's really a discovery that it needs to be done by you. It can be helped, it can be facilitated, uh, but it's only you has, you know, have the knowledge and the keys to, uh, to see in it, yeah? Um, so understanding the thoughts, but also understanding the situation that has triggered it. Uh, what happened that made me feel really low and that we can really feel that can't we like some days where we just like wow did I make the right decision and we start to doubt and we started going like should I look for a job again and um, typically right what was it what happened was it a difficulty with a client uh, I didn't get uh, maybe um, this um, this job that or this uh, particular piece of work that I applied for uh, I've lost a client. So knowing our triggers is actually really, really important. Or oh, there was this conversation, or uh, I've started going on uh, on LinkedIn and comparing myself. You know, like understanding what are those triggers that have made you really feel low on that particular day. And the following step is it's sort of like the, those three levels: is what is potentially the hidden limiting belief Be behind all of that. What does that mean about myself? What do I believe about myself that I can start to challenge? Um, so for as ex for an example, we can have very classically, I'm not enough. Uh, I'm never going to make it. I always mess things up. And these could be things that you carry or you've carried for a very, very long time in your life. Uh, that can have started very early on, yeah? Those little limiting beliefs and we want to become more and more and more aware. And that in itself, that very step of awareness um, changes it. Like, like I said, uh, psychology has proven it. It stops, it starts losing its power over you when I can see it, when I put it out there on paper or, uh, or if it's been spoken uh, and we start challenging it. Oh, all right, okay. And we start looking at the other things, uh, maybe my strengths, my wins, my values and looking at how I can be a perfectly imperfect uh, being. But more about that very soon. Uh, let's carry on. Um, another very important thing to understand is the comparing. I've touched on it, didn't I, about, uh, about LinkedIn just here. Uh, LinkedIn, social media, mm, this is the best uh, playground for our internal saboteurs, the self-sabotage, and particularly the comparing, right? Um, so to understand that, it's like imagining that you have inside of you uh, an inner critic and other inner critics that look like different from one person to another that constantly, constantly, constantly feed negative feedback inside of you, in your head. And we've got to learn and understand what's going on with that self-sabotage to that so that we can unlearn it and relearn a new process. Um, and uh, for that, I would recommend you to check uh, positive intelligence, particularly the um, saboteur test. 
So Sabato test is a free test. It takes about five minutes. Uh, please don't go and do it just yet. Do it at the end of this presentation so that you can uh, get all of the other information from the presentation. And I will give you at the very end the link in the uh, chat. Uh, if you're watching the recording, it's really simple, positive intelligence, Sabato test to Google that and you'll find it. Um, and that allows you to see what's going on particularly for you. We all have this inner critic, this comparing judge inside of us, but then we have different saboteurs. And it's so important to understand um, if you've got more of a controller, more of a pleaser, more of a stickler, uh, more of an hyperachiever uh, tendency inside of you. What is it that is specific to you? And again, from one person to another, it's completely, completely different. Uh, so super important again in this um, step of awareness. Okay, uh, then we look at the question of the worth. And I found that this has been really, really crucial, particularly when um, we are putting creativity in our work. Uh, so for freelancers and uh, that are really creative, uh, which is very often something that is associated actually um, or if you feel, even if your work is not necessarily creative, but you feel that you are put your heart and soul into your work because it's your own business, uh, it's your vision, and you feel, particularly when you start, very exposed about uh, putting your work out there, putting, talking about your services. Um, so this is very important to, to see and to recognize. Um, and uh, because we can easily, in that instance, start to take things personally, potentially, and uh, sort of mix things up together. Um, and what we want is to have that right distance and being okay about recognizing that it's absolutely fine not to be everyone's cup of tea, yeah? If you look at yourself and all those different things that we see out there, all the different styles, um, it's absolutely fine that not everything is your cup of tea. I think you, you, it's easier to recognize like that. And that doesn't mean that uh, the things that you don't like are rubbish, don't, uh, are not worth anything or anything like that. It doesn't, it doesn't, does it? But it's just like, okay, it's gonna, you know, some people are gonna resonate with it, some people are gonna like it and some are not, yeah. Uh, so not expecting, because that's an illusion that, um, everybody is going to like your work yeah but i want you to connect to this um to the statement just here that your worth your true worth cannot be touched it's got nothing to do with your work and whether people like it or not yeah it's not about others and when we have people pleasing tendencies as well that that can be quite difficult initially it's not about them yeah liking or not liking it's not even about me yeah let's put all the egos out of the way what is it about we are not our work right um we are about the service that we're putting to the table yeah we are about uh actually having the life that we've always wanted to have being a freelancer having more freedom having more um time potentially you know, having the potentially the option of living wherever I want if I want to work remotely. Yes, that's what we're about. The impact, helping those clients, um, providing that value. Yes, and your worth is completely unique. Um, and recognizing that, recognizing it, and I will give you some tools to help you do that. Uh, embracing it and protecting it fiercely. Um, is going to make a world of a difference a world of a difference uh, so hopefully yes i will give you some tools to uh to to work on that the idea being like you take the most value as possible from uh, from this presentation so we're going to look at continue looking at how do we do that how do we mani ma navigate those waves navigate this center this center this uncertainty pardon me navigating the uncertainty Oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get more clients and this project might be coming to an end. Navigating the mindset and navigating the learning zone will keep on learning. Like it's the, uh, it's 
the path as a human being is the journey. We always learn. And uh, we need to grow that leader inside of us. Yes. Yeah? So, and that's really the inner work. Be more solid, stable and strong uh, so that we can thrive on, uh, on the outside. So that was this initial part on the awareness. So now we're going to start moving, looking at the solutions. Yep. So that's maybe why you want to, when you want to have your um, little bit, piece of paper or, or a document open on your, on your laptop to maybe take some notes. Um, we're going to look at the alternative. So what is the alternative to imposter syndrome and all those doubts and those fears and those thoughts? Uh, for me, the alternative is to grow our confidence. Um, and I want to address first uh, something very, very important is that confidence is not arrogance, arrogance, being arrogant. A lot of people, I think, are afraid of um, becoming the extreme um, version of low confidence, which would be, you know, being dominant, being looking down on people, uh, thinking that everybody else is uh, is rubbish, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and being arrogant. No, uh, we can be totally confident and and humble. We can be totally uh, balanced there. Uh, we don't need to go in one extreme or the other. We can be right in the middle. What exactly where uh, where it is balanced to be? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to look at that mindset and help us to uh, to have a better bulletproof. Uh, will it prove imposter proof, imposter syndrome proof uh, mindset uh, by, you know, by taking ownership of who we really, really are. Uh, so whilst we've had more awareness and we know what's going on in the blind spot, we know what's there, uh, you know, not only the tip of the iceberg, but uh, the whole picture of the iceberg, um, we, can, uh, we can look at things a lot more in detail. And I want to uh, point you towards that, which is what I call the realm of the shoulds. And I like the little picture about the, the should monster, isn't it cute? Um, the should monster. So uh, all the shoulds keeps us in this ideal, this utopia, this impossible to reach um, uh, standard that we can all have in our head. Um, we cannot be perfect. It doesn't exist. Yeah. And if we keep that alive, then it keeps us in failure mode because we never, never reach that uh, utopia, that ideal. And uh, there's always something else, right? All, if, even if I get X, Y, Z, then there'll be something else to change, to improve. And you'll keep ch chasing it until you die in stress and anxiety, never reaching that comfort, internal comfort of going, ah, yes, this is okay. Um, so the should monster uh, prevent you, you know, really sabotaging us too. And uh, so this is one of my invitations is to look at your shoots and be pay attention in your day to day. And if you can catch them, maybe write them down. Oh, oh I should, or I must, or I should not. Sometimes it can be in the negative. Oh, I really, really have to, yeah. Um, and again, when I was saying earlier, like to pay attention of specifically the words that we hear in our head um, is, is really important. It's really key. Then we want to um, identify, keep identifying specifically for you where we compare ourselves too much. Um, typically, uh, fill in the dots. I am too, I am not enough, what, whichever. Um, and it's so interesting. It's so interesting to see. Um, I do some workshops and group workshops in person, and uh, and I love doing that in a, in a room of people because we start seeing how both extremes are in the room and how uh, ridiculous that is in a way. Um, of course, you know they're they're unconscious, and we don't do that intentionally. But we can start of seeing like right. Uh, one person saying I'm too young and the other person saying I'm too old. And they look at each other and they're just like, no, well, you're definitely not. Oh, so if it's true for someone else, could it be true actually for me? And it's so much easier to see it in, other, in another person. And again, it's because of that staying inside of you and having that perspective, that mirror, that, that, that way of reflecting is really um, so empowering and so helpful. 
uh, it can also be like so and so is better than me uh, or it would I would be so much better if uh, if only I had blah 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 uh, etc why or, or if only I didn't have blah 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 yeah so all those things that I think uh, is limiting me yeah so again um, we're going through a lot of things really quickly I uh, I would recommend for you to take the time to take the time to explore um you are not your thoughts you know so all these things that we hear all the shoulds all the saboteurs all the comparing and uh and you've probably had the experience on uh going back to linkedin um uh, or, or another social media we just like feel like everybody else is so much better than us right and it's uh, it's so interesting to watch the thoughts when we go through and uh, and to be really, really clear actually with like um, with taking that distance, that healthy distance with them. You are not these negative thoughts, right? You are not these voices in our heads that, is, that are telling us I'm never good enough, I'm never this, I should do more. Um, and uh, this is not the truth, right? This is not objective, this is not who you are. And um, yes, please start believing me just a little bit. Start just like going slightly with the idea. Oh, okay, well, let's see, let's see, let's explore together. We can gradually stop believing that. Yeah. Sometimes even start laughing at that. Start laughing at it and just go, ah, really? And that really starts losing its power, right? So the next time the thought potentially will pop, it will just like move very quickly. Yeah. Um, bringing objectivity to the table, like we were saying about like the reflection is always helpful. And that's one of the uh, biggest weapon against the imposter syndrome is a friend, a colleague, someone that you trust, um, someone in your family. And um, it's so interesting when we get feedback and so typical again with entrepreneurs, business owners and freelancers is that we get beautiful feedback uh, from clients um, and we struggle to believe it yeah we get thank yous and we, we we tend to dismiss those thank yous right um i think it's about time that we start actually believing what others are telling us and the feedback that they're telling us yeah and understanding that yes i'm the person that knows myself the best possible that no one else can know myself like i do and that's why of course we're talking about awareness but when it comes uh, to being objective and comparing, I am not the person who is the best position to have an objective point of view. So we need to work on that uh, because what the view of myself, the judgment of myself is going to be too harsh. So I really need to work on that to bring some objectivity and define what it's true. Clarity on what is true. We want objectivity, not cruelty. We are so cruel, so hard on ourselves. Like we would never talk to others like we talk to ourselves in our head. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And we want to look at our strengths. We want to look at our weaknesses. You know, be honest, not cruel. Be honest. Looking at the learning points. Okay, what am I learning? What's, what's my learning curve at the moment? What's my plan? Okay, I'm learning this. I'm learning the skill. I'm partnering with someone to do that work. I'm, I've got a system. I'm um, early on in X, Y, Z. Looking for a solution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we build an objective picture. Yeah, to be able to embrace it all, love it all, loving the light and loving the shadow. Yeah, it is part of being a human to have all these different parts. You know. You have weaknesses and you have strength and of course there are things that we put in place to improve certain things to work on others and that's absolutely fine but we are worthy of love exactly as we are right now even if we are a work in process which by the way we will always be <laughs> and again it's so much easier to see for others isn't it uh, we never expect others to be perfect but we do for ourselves don't we we should again we're back to the should yeah and um one concept that i found recently that i found really really interesting it's actually by adam grant he talks about the uh an alternative to perfectionism which is imperfectionism so being okay with things being good enough 
being okay with things being imperfect. Good enough is all right. And uh, and stop looking at perfect perfectionism as something good, right? Looking at, no, actually, this is something that can really, really be damaging, yeah? Um, and to stop expecting yourself to being perfect is a milestone, super, super important shift um, towards becoming more confident. Uh, so, you know, part of that is like being okay with having moments and emotions and cycles of being okay with you know being human really yeah it's almost like a an opposite to perfect isn't it like there's very being perfect and there's being human <laughs> excellent moving to confidence talking about confidence so this is really where uh i wanted you to to uh so this is the journey that we took together moving from imposter syndrome and those doubts to coming to the land of confidence um and the definition of confidence for me is really going like looking at ourselves objectively and going yes this is me here is what i've got um i know that it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea i know that you know i'm realist uh but I am so passionate, I so want to deliver on uh, this impact, this service, uh, this work that I'm doing. I'm so, so, so passionate um, that uh, that's what I'm about. That's what I'm focusing on. Um, and that's really, really important that you define your, your definition uh, for yourself. Uh, and we look at those thoughts and we see them passing by and we okay, we're okay with, with them. Yeah, they're gonna come, they're okay, they're okay here. Uh, and gradually, gradually, they're going to lose power and they're going to stop um, affecting you, yeah? Preventing you from, from doing things that you want to do. So I love this little quote here, like you can you cannot stop the waves, so the waves are going to come. And, you know, this is valid for imposter syndrome as well as different challenges in life, in life, in business, in work, in relationships. We're going to have waves, yeah? Uh, this, is the, this is the truth of, uh, of how things are. Uh, so we cannot stop the waves yet, yeah. uh, but we can learn to stay. Yeah, so we're learning to surf here. We're learning to become awesome surfers uh, with all of this so that we don't get lost following these thoughts. Um, we know it, they're not true. Yeah, we know gradually more and more that they're not true. It's not who I am. Uh, and uh, I keep on going, I keep on showing up authentically giving my best shot, knowing that I'm doing my best. This is this is something that really, really works for me. I'm doing my best and this is enough. It is enough. I'm being my imperfect self and that's okay. Uh, I don't know everything. Super, super important too. Like acknowledging that uh, I cannot know everything and that's fine. Uh, I'm okay with having things that I'm working on that I'm going to improve. So I can be confident and stable now. I don't have to wait for again and um, to get that level to get this to get that to get that level of experience uh confidence doesn't need uh to wait yeah i'm excited to be here i'm excited to contribute to have an impact to build to share to collaborate to help others yeah that's what is so important and is my fuel as well um to to continue um also wanted to share that this little tool that i really like um that really can help to uh, build this idea of uh, of who I am, who you are, pardon, uh, and why you do things. Um, and so that's a model that's valid to look at your business and to define your business. Why do you do what you do? What is it that you do exactly? Define your service and how do you do it? But I believe as well that that's uh, that really works as a, uh, a a tool to explore yourself as. Um, it's also looking at how can I be confident and how can I, how can I defi define myself as a confident person? Um, some, some people also, and I found that really, really great, is to um, use the fact that keeping a list of all their wins and all the things that are reasons for them to be confident and whenever they have a little bit of a downtime, they can refer to it. So it could be maybe in the notes of your phone or something like that uh oh i'm having a bit of a rough day there's been that there's been this those challenges um and you look back at this document that really helps you to connect back 
into this stability, uh, this inner confidence. So that can be another another little tool. Um, and yeah, the results that we are looking for really is this result of empowerment. And empowerment, the more we get empowered ourselves, the more empower, we empower others. And uh, and we also do a lot more, you know. We um, oh, Clemence, we lost you your audio. Yes, the uh, microphone was muted. Are we back? Yes, we are. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks. Um, so we are more also. You're, we are more in the flow in the sense of um, the ability of doing more. Um, we are more also able to embrace the fact that there is a potential for mistakes in things because we're learning, because we're learning and mistakes are okay. Mistakes are okay. And we want to go in the, with the flow. And I love this, um, again, you've, you've seen that the analogy of the surfer because surfer is not, you know, uh, afraid of falling in the water, right? And trying again. Uh, and that can actually be something that we can start to sh shift and to see as something positive, rather than looking at mistakes as something bad, but looking at mistakes as uh, going into our adventure zone, okay, again, pardon, and looking at um, doing things that are new for us uh, without these mistakes, without these moments of maybe we feel a little bit embarrassed or we feel a little bit nervous because we've never done it before, uh, they cannot be learning or growth, you know, they're super, super important. Um, and I think that confidence can also just be, uh, just be able to take that next step to go like, right, I'm having all these thoughts and all these doubts, but I'm still going to go on that stage, for example. Yeah. Uh, so really want to be in that flow, in this action. Um, I feel like uh, for a lot of people, they, the sign of this imposter syndrome being more and more in control is actually the fact that they're doing more and more. Yeah. Uh, oh, I would have been like, what I can hear, for example, would be, oh, I would have been so scared a few months ago uh, to going to networking events and talking to people. I could never have done that or contact this person and doing doing this and doing that. But now, do you know what? I, did, I still did feel scared, but I did it. I did it. I was able to actually do it. And I was a little bit shaky and it could have been better and so on and so forth. But I actually, I did it. I took action. I didn't feel stuck and paralyzed and stopped. So, uh, so that's for me a really, really cool, really cool sign. So we're looking at this transformation from like being frustrated, being self-sabotaged, uh, being in that confusion as well. I think the doubt uh, is one of the things that bring a lot the most confusion possible to a state of inner strength of certainty of confidence and fulfillment so um uh, so yes and i just want to finish by this thing that it starts with you change starts with you within you uh but it doesn't start until you do so whatever step you're taking whatever things that you've identified that made a difference for you today keep exploring that um, and and keep on um, building that uh, that change for for yourself. So it's been a pleasure presenting with you today. Uh, my name is Clem Harding. Uh, you can find me on my website coachclem.com uh, if you want more information. It will be a pleasure to connect. Uh, for example, LinkedIn. I'll put that in the chat. Uh, I always offer a free discovery sessions. So if that's something you could be interested in, uh, all the information all, again is on the website. And I will put, put also the link for the free saboteur test. And it will be a pleasure to have your shares, your question, anything at all that you want to uh, talk about in this Q&A. Thank you again for, for listening. <laughs> Thank you so much, Clemence. And I believe we have two questions or a question and a comment in the chat. So okay. let me read it so that everyone who's watching the session later knows what it is about. And it would be great if you could answer. Or well, actually, Otilia, I'm not sure if you can unmute yourself because maybe you can just ask your question yourself. If not, I'll just read it out. But if you can, that would be great. If you're speaking, Otilia, we cannot hear you.
Oh, now, yes, now I can hear you. Okay, hi. <laughs> I was very far in the distance. So I was saying that as I was listening to the presentation, but thank you very much, as a professional imposter syndrome person, I was thinking, okay, so imposter syndrome versus being lazy, because some of us have learned, I, family, society, school, have learned to improve ourselves in this hard way, but doubting our, ourselves, like, okay, no, I'm not good enough, I need to be better, and blah, 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 that type of thing. So um, maybe if I think that I, I quit that path, I'm going to just become lazy and I feel, okay, I'm going to think I am enough for anything and I'm just not going to look for excellent or excellence or to improve myself. So what do you think about a healthier approach? Because most of us have already this training. It's difficult to untrain yourself and learn a, a healthier approach. Can you share some thoughts? Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Yes. And it really makes me think about what I was sharing about the um, extreme of uh, confidence and the fear of going to the other extreme. And that's this is exactly the same. We fear that if we lose um, these self-doubts and this critic and these high standards or I have high standards and I want to reach excellence, etc. We feel like we are going to go to the other extreme of the spectrum, which is being lazy or not delivering or forgetting or being late or not having good quality work and things like that. And uh, and this is a classic, uh, classic fear and that this is a thing that keeps us into this suffering. Why does it keep us in the suffering? Because we have such high standards, the standard of perfection, uh, an ideal that we can never reach. We can never, 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 never reach that. Yeah. Wow. So that keeps you in this uh, unhappiness level and this failure level. So you keep, even though you're improving and uh, even if, when your success is, is going well, uh, internally, the, uh, the living experience is failure. And it's a shame. Right, right, because you are doing all of that to feeling uh, a level of achievement. So it's really about re-going into working into this balance and going at, okay, how can I put that spectrum, uh, not one extreme, not another extreme either, not less or not too much, but something more in the middle that yet you can identify. And, uh, and so with that what i would suggest as little milestone to help you is to celebrate more your achievements um that's something that a lot of people struggle with they set those very high standards of you know like oh, i'm going to deliver this i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that i'm going to get to whichever point and they forget or it completely goes out of the window to actually celebrate when they get there and, and to go like, wow, I've done really well. This is amazing. And to really acknowledge what you've learned, to really make a list of uh, all the things that have gone well and what you've done. So again, we're bringing that objectivity to the table and going, okay, great. And of course, there's always more. There will always be more. But the more specific we can be about that more, what's my next more? Cool. Because that keeps me, you know, like engaged, and then I've got that drive. Uh, but I have to sometimes go also with myself and go like, oh, my more is like here. All right, okay, <laughs> that might be difficult, and that might set me up for failure. Right, okay, uh, can I bring that more? Sorry, I use the other end. Uh, that more just here, so that yes, I can in a few months' time, for example, I'll be celebrating. And how am I going to celebrate? How am I going to treat myself potentially? Uh, what's that going to look like so that I can really enjoy um, sort of, you know, like uh, harvest the fruits of these efforts? Yeah. Um, does that make any sense, Atelia? Yes, that helps. It's, you know, because the when the syndrome is strong enough, the, there is always a but in my head, but, you know, but yes. you know how is right. i'm going to be just self complacent but you know that type yeah. of thing <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly and when you're realistic and we go like yeah okay there could always be more and so and so might be more experienced in this than that and the other and and the ideal could be x y z you know even the, the millionaires some millionaires are stuck like that and they're never happy and they want the next million or the next billion or whatever and never get to a state of like 
wow, this is great. I'm loving that, you know? And that's a shame because that's what life's about. So maybe just to finalize my my comments, maybe it's it's a human trait that we need to it's like in the DNA in a way, but we need yeah. to understand how as you said before, how to live with that and the, the to make the best of it, no? We do. We do, absolutely. Yeah. And it's not like intentionally that we're sabotaging ourselves sometimes with these things. Uh, but we need to, yeah, to like review it a little bit, manage it a little bit so that it comes to something that's more balanced so that we can uh, harvest, for example, in this, in this example, the uh, positive of like wanting to go to do good work and high standard work and being driven and continue improving as well as not wanting our expectations to be unrealistic and ideal and impossible to reach. So we want to whoop, 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 manage that. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. <laughs>